I want to bring in market watcher Ryan Payne. Ryan, welcome back. Good to see you again. Stuart. We've had people on this program this, today saying the Fed's not going to cut rates at all this month. What do you say? Yeah, so you have 100% odds traders are betting that it's going to happen. And remember with the markets, it's always definitely maybe, right? Definitely they're going to cut rights, but maybe they won't. Maybe they won't, <laughs> right, right. You don't think they will? I don't because, remember, the market does its best to confound the majority. And when everybody thinks something's going to happen 100% of the time, I'd be very, very wary. And the other thing you have to think about is the Fed said they will do what it takes to sustain the rally. That's very vague language. And last time I look, economic data keeps coming in better and better, especially the jobs number last week. So it's going to be very hard for the Fed to justify a rate cut here. So you're saying probably no rate cut this month. And are you also saying we don't need one this month? Exactly. I think that's the thing that, you know, keeps coming better and better is the economic data, because economists have always discounted the market so far this year, uh, just like analysts keep discounting earnings. So I think for those two reasons, yes, I think as long as the economic data is strong, there should be no rate cuts. OK, now what about the second half of the year? We just got into it as of uh, the last week. Um, what about profits? Because that is really the driver of the market, even yes. more than interest rates, I would say. Profits. Where are we going with profits, second half of the year? Oh, I'm wildly bullish. Um, and it goes back to what I was just saying. You know, analysts have a 0% expectations this quarter for earnings. 0% earnings is what they're expecting. Remember last quarter, they said negative earnings. We didn't get negative earnings. So my guess is surprises will be in the positive again, and it'll be another catalyst for stocks. So how much of an increase year on year? The second half of the year, how much will profits be up compared to the second half of last calendar year? They're going to be up a lot less, but remember, we had that big tax stimulus last year. Now we're getting back to a more normal type of increase in earnings. Which would be? I mean, it could be like 3 4%, which is a little low. But again, with expectations maybe going up more than what analysts think, it could be even better than that. I think just good news in general will be a catalyst just because we're expecting not great news in terms of earnings growth. Does the market go up in lockstep with profits? So if you get a 4% increase in profits compared to last year, do you get a 4% jump in stock prices? I say even higher just because right now, think about it, you've got $8 trillion sitting in savings accounts right now. It's like a powder keg. You know, investors have been getting out of the market this year, even with the S&P up 20%. You've had money going to the bond market in droves, which I think is a real issue. I've talked about that before. So my fear is, if you're sitting on the sidelines right now, you know, economic data comes in better. Uh, earnings come in better than expected. And then all of a sudden it's like, man, I got to get in this market. You get everyone coming at the same time. And that could melt the market up much more than earnings growth. So you are still talking about a melt up as a possibility later this year. Absolutely. Where's, it, where's this eight trillion in savings accounts comes from? That's like bond funds and bank savings accounts and CDs, all that kind of stuff, isn't it? That's more just that's not bond even funds. bond funds. Bond funds. That's a whole other story. But if you just look at cash or money market funds right now, it's at eight trillion it's eight trillion. Earning, you know, under 1% on average, which is just insane. That's an enormous amount of money. It's, We've it's, only got a $20 trillion economy and $8 tr trillion in savings cash accounts. That's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. And if you think about it, after 2008, people are just so, so fearful. They just never got back into the market in a big way. In fact, stock ownership's down about 10% the last decade. So Ryan Payne says a melt up could be coming because that $8 trillion is going to move en masse into the market. You heard it here first, Stuart. Yeah, I, yeah, I heard it right <laughs> from you, son. All right, uh, Ryan, that was good stuff. We appreciate you being with us. Thanks, Stuart. Thank you.